वेलकम वेलकम सर वेलकम थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर अमन जी हाउ आर यू सोसाइटी प्रोफेशन एज यू नो दैट let us consider if this types of the platform is not available then it is very difficult to connect to you so this types of the thing it will be the approachable effective and useful to the each and everybody so that we can contribute our research our ideas our views to each other so thank you very much and i i again welcome you all uh, and i hope that this lecture and this talk it will be the useful to each and everyone so thank you very much dr uh, amandeep singh ji for provide the opportunity to interact with you thank you so thank you so much sir so before proceeding for further let's introduce our uh, today's speaker uh, sir is basically working as a research assistant professor institute of organic and polymer materials research and development center of smart textile technology taiwan the side of this uh, sir i clear their uh, Recently, also research in organic and polymeric materials, the Center and Development Center for Small Chemistry. So, uh, if we talk about the contribution of Sir as well as Chairman, Sir have already received so many awards. Side of this, Sir have published more than twenty-five research and review articles in very reputed journals. Side of this, uh, Sir have already presented a talk, a smart talk. As a source person and senior speaker, speaker at various we can say that conferences and national and international uh, conferences also. So, in in short, sir, have did a lot in case of field of pharmacy and research field. So, thank you so much, sir. So, please go ahead. Thank you so much. So give me a minute. I'll try to share my screen. Um, yes, okay. It's connected. Okay, and then I try sharing. Yes, okay. Mm. May I confirm my presence? Uh, is that everything fine? My voice and my screen, everything. All is well. All is well. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, let's directly dive into my talk. Read. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, okay, so uh, today my topic is about uh, challenges in meeting the real-time demand for wearable sensors and wearable healthcare. And uh, myself, Dr. Loganathan Viramuthu, just now uh, Professor Amandeep uh, have introduced me. And uh, today I'd like to introduce you a uh, current status and what are all the challenges existing in this field. Okay, let's directly go into the topic. First of all, I'd like to introduce the country where I am presently residing in. And this is a country called Taiwan, which is closely located to China. And uh, here you can see uh, they have a very tallest building. Uh, I can use a uh, pointer function here. Okay, yeah, here you can see the tallest building, which is like uh, very tall, like 101 floors it has, and uh, which is uh, like most tallest, like five or six years back. I I believe. Okay, and this one is my campus. Uh, this is Taipei Tech, shortly known as, and the full name is National Taipei University of Technology. This is the main entrance. And now, uh, I want to introduce you about skin, first of all, because whatever research I'm doing in is sometimes it is termed as electronic skin. What do you mean by electronic skin? First, we should understand how the human skin is functioning and what are all the components available in our skin. Because skin is composed of different layers, you know that it is the topmost layer is called epidermis, and the middle layer we can call it as dermis, and they have other fat layers, everything. Okay, so what is the role of epiderm epidermis? Okay, the epidermis outer layer can protect you. Okay, so it is acting as a barrier from 
uh, foreign resources, like for example, bacteria, microbes, something like that. And also it can saturate your body conditions with the environment. So you will feel comfortable. It can balance your body temperature, okay? So uh, like, for example, if you want to consider about uh, in the hot weather, if you are feeling very hot, what will happen? Especially from our body fluids will come out to balance your body system, right? The same way our electronic skins also can helpful for our human body monitoring and for sensing aspects as well. And uh, now I'll get into my topic here. Let's see some of the nature inspired structures like this. And here everyone is aware of uh, lotus leaf effects and they have uh, exciting property called hydrophobicity, super hydrophobicity. If you are going to put some water, what will happen? It will roll away, right? Why it is because it is having some nano and micro protrusions. That kind of protrusions can give rise to what is called, uh, how we term it as, like uh, we generally term it as like uh, not super hydrophobicity because we need to protect ourselves from corrosion or something. They can also use it for those kind of aspects. And when we talk about colors, even for colors, structural colors, because everyone have seen that butterfly have very distinct colorful appearance, right? So why it is so? It has some structural features that can reflect the sunlight in a particular wavelength so that we can see colors, okay? So it is not like chemical phenomena, actually, it is like a physical phenomenon, okay? And apart from that, if you consider this kind of human skin uh, textures, you just see how the fingerprint patterns work. And if you are going to touch or if you want to send something, you can perceive the sensory aspects, right? How it is working. It is similar like our electronic skins. You see how we inspire ourselves from this kind of nature-inspired geometrical structures okay and especially nowadays everyone is focusing on sustainability and they want some inspiration from nature especially not just for super hydrophobicity or color or for sensing aspects they also work on something like harvesting the energy from the energy uh, like natural resources no, no need to rely just directly on the fossil fuels you can also harvest the energy from natural sustainable resources so we can go into those aspects. Okay, now I want to introduce, because I belong to Smart Textile Group, and uh, we know that how the human society have evolved in the past uh, few decades, or you can see, uh, like, in not decades, it's like over a century, right? Okay, so eventually we, we are tribe people, then we are like four or five, 500 years back, how we people live. We just use some natural or sustainable resources to build our textiles and especially like for example if you want to create some fabrics we just take some natural fibers and then we weave them hand weave or we use some looms to make some hand looms like that right so apart from that we also use some animal based resources for example silk wool and we process the animal hides to leather like that so these are all old Nowadays, at present, what is happening? We need some exciting features in our textiles, not only just to protect our skin from sun or you want to balance your moisture management in your body. Apart from that, you need something exceptional, okay? So everyone is looking upon different dyes, colors, pigments. They need some sustainability and they want some appealing look. They want air permeability. They want protection. So... I want to jump into the personal protective equipment now. Okay, wearable health cares and sensors at present scenario. Okay, at current scenario, if you look into, there are many commercial products available uh, when we look into wearable electronics, okay? So we can couple our devices or we can connect our devices with some personal equipments like uh, we have our smart devices so that we can easily track what is going on. We don't want to wait for a long time to get our results. It's very easy, single touch, and it's tactile, and you can get it at any moment, like point of care devices. You don't want sophisticated instrument, rigid devices. You want some flexible devices or stretchable devices and air permeable devices. So that kind of devices are having higher demand in recent years. And now 
I want to show you some of the recent progresses in terms of the energy aspects, okay? You see, they are using this kind of flexible system to harvest the energy or for energy storage. Okay, you are able to work with some flexible sensors or flexible electronics, but still you need some energy inputs, right? Then only it can work. So for that, we need to build some flexible batteries or supercapacitors like this, or we can rely on some biomechanical energy harvesters. Okay, now I'd like to introduce you about something like, because in recent years, everyone is very well aware of uh, this kind of personal protective equipments. For example, you see face shield, surgical mask, isolation gloves, gloves, all these things. It is necessary to protect ourselves from this kind of uh, toxic viruses, okay? So how we can protect ourselves, especially in terms of mask fabrication, because everyone might have used like past few years, we get accustomed to this kind of uh, personal protective equipment. And uh, for that, they have to prepare some fiber-based devices because we need to breathe. If you're going to prepare masks, the major aspect is to protect. Okay, still you need to breathe, right? So if you prepare with some filling-based de a mask, then you cannot breathe. You will have some breathing difficulty. So that people have come up with different kind of fibers masks. And in terms of uh, this process, we can call it as spun bone method. And this one is called milk blown methods. From this, uh, you can just see how the basic setup is. We have some polymer tank, and usually for preparing surgical masks, they just use some synthetic polymers like polystyrene, polypropylene, and polyethylene, this kind of polymers. And then they melt at higher melting points uh, till it reaches the melting point, and then they use the hot air to blow them. So that's why it's called milk blowing. You melt and you blow them, then you will harvest your, with the help of cylindrical collectors, it will run like this, okay? And then you are going to push your fibers with the help of your hot air, okay? Then you have corresponding cooling system here to cool your fibers, then you will eventually collect all your fibers onto your, sorry, yeah, onto your cylindrical collectors. This is how our fibers work. And the major problem is, okay, you can collect fibers and it is scalable, you can collect more, and the production is also good, but still it is synthetic. And the problem is, the major problem is they are microfibers. Okay, what is the problem between microfibers? Okay, we can see, okay, in the recent few years, we can see how the global consumption has increased. It is terribly increased because we know that after COVID, before COVID, it is different scenario, but after COVID, the plastic pollution was getting like <laughs> drastically increased. So how to control those things? We need some sustainable resources. For example, you see for preparing personal protective equipments like surgical mask, you are using this kind of polymers, synthetic polymers. And for N95 also the same, low density polyethylene and nitrile gloves. See, they are using the synthetic and their copolymers. In terms of uh, apron, gown, drapes, face shield, everything is relying on some synthetic fossil fuel based polymers. So, and they have certain strict standards. You cannot directly prepare anything and commercialize into the market. It has to comply with their standards. Every nation have their own standard or they have some international standards too. So for that, you have to qualify your product until you reach their standards, okay? Then only you, your product will get qualified and then you can promote your products in the market. Okay, this is how the personal protective devices work. And the major polymers are PE, polypropylene, polystyrene, PVC, PET, and very recently most of them working on polyurethane. And uh, here you can see, uh, this is uh, current statistics, uh, very recent statistics in that they have shown how the COVID pre and the during COVID session, what happens in different uh, countries, like how their market values, and you can see uh, how many countries have contributed. Like most of them are from China. You see top exporting countries are, they are giving many production lines to produce this kind of personal protective equipment. And apart from that, uh, you can also see the differences in terms of uh, energy, greenhouse gases, and uh, blue water, solid waste. They are also having critical impact on our water resources, soil resources, and atmospheric ambient conditions like global warming all those things 
And here you see the export rate and import rate in terms of uh, different countries. Uh, you can see how they are growing. Okay, so personal protective equipments have a greater demand in recent years. And you see again, I'm highlighting different kind of polymers and where it is used, their properties and uh, what kind of products they can develop. Okay, you can prepare all these kind of personal protective products and you can reach higher standards. But the problem is the sustainability and that creates a lot of pollution in the environment. Okay, system. So how you can negotiate your balance or how can you balance your personal protective equipment along with the sustainability? Yeah, you have to recycle regenerate okay you you prepare something or you control your polymers or you can control you modify your polymers until you, you can achieve some certain degree of degradability and especially you, you can see this image in this it is evident that many of the masks used mask it's getting discarded everywhere they don't have proper recycling systems so that kind of uh, not uh, not better for the environment so it is going to create a lot of uh, microplastics and nanoplastic contamination over water resource, resources. Okay, what is going to happen if the marine resources are getting contaminated? Eventually, all the aquatic organisms are going to consume your plastics, microplastics. Not They are not going to bite your mask. Okay, they know, they have sense, but still, all the microplastics or nanoplastics will get accumulated into their body system. So when you are going to cook and eat, you will also have those kind of yeah, implication in your body. So it will have a very worse uh, impacts on your health system. So we have to find some sustainable resources and biodegradable resources to prepare this kind of personal productivity. And this work is published very recently in Nanoletters. And in this, they are highlighting the importance of consumption of polypropylene. Okay, you see this is polypropylene, this is melt blowing system, but they have a small modification in the system. Uh, in the previous slides, I show you how they prepare personal protective equipments using melt blowing method. But in this case, they have a small difference between the commercial way and this way. Okay, this one, they use some laser to melt the cone. Okay, they have some cone here, right? Okay, that is going to experience high temperature that will cause your polymer to decrease its viscosity. So that kind of lowered viscosity will contribute to better morphological characters. You see, this is the conventional system. The fibers are around like microfibers, okay? Their range, their domain is within micro. But you want better enhanced filtration efficiency for your personal protection. So you need very ultra fine fibers to protect yourself. Then you can even protect very small aerosols. For example, not only considering COVID situation, I'm also want to I also want to stress the impacts of particulate matters because we know that particulate matters are threatening the human society because particulate matters are everywhere, aerosol particles. So if it's getting accumulated into your body, like your, in your lungs, then you will have some impacts in your health system. So you need to prepare a material which can give you enhanced filtration efficiency, as well as you have to control your sustainability. In this project, they use this kind of system, okay? You compare this one, the commercial filters, they prepare it's like what they need. They require about 0.72 grams of polypropylene. Whereas if they use this kind of process, then you can control your polymer utilization. So they have two two major impacts by using this method they can control their polymer utilization also they can achieve higher filtration efficiency by controlling their morphology so these kind of innovative innovative ideas are required at present scenario so apart from that we should also consider how to recycle those things or how to degrade them or how to design such systems okay so this is quite important for building a sustainable human society. Okay, now again, this work uh, in this work they have fabricated uh, some spray coating method. Okay, they use gloves. Okay, or gloves or some other system like your gown. Okay, personal protective clothing. You want usually personal protective clothings. They are not having antibacterial effects or anti-fouling effects. 
okay so if you prepare this kind of block of polymer system you see they have three different blocks you consider this as a and this as b and this as c and they use some radicals and initiators to uh, process and then they can achieve this kind of tri block copolymers and what is the role of dma in this because dma have very long chain okay longer chain in the polymer so that can anchor with your polypropylene because we know that most of the synthetic polymers are hydrophobic in nature we need this kind of long chain molecules to create some van der waals attraction between interaction between the system so you will have better conformability so it can retain its functionality over a long period of range so this is quite important apart from that if you consider pg this this block what they are going to do they have some anti addition effect so even if they have some airborne pathogens in the yeah environment you can avoid those things okay and the other one is to gain some polymer brush structures and polycationic compounds because we uh, we are very well aware of this kind of polycationic system you see this is like amine group tertiary amine groups see they are charged polycationic compounds so this kind of polycationic compounds can kill the pathogens so they design the structure and then they use some spray coating method to form the coating over your gowns and then they can have some antibacterial and antiviral effects on your textiles so these are all the good innovations we are looking for right and you check this one this is to highlight that uh, this kind of personal protective equipments are creating microplastics and nanoplastic contamination in the society and that has very significant effects in the natural resources and uh, we have to overcome this kind of issues and here also you see they have to fabricate this kind of flow diagrams to show that whether how they can process or how they can reprocess the used plastics you see in the real time environment a lot of this kind of contaminations happening and they are not degrading that fast they are occupying the lands so they can consider we can consider that as landfills so that can make your ecosystem more worse and you won't have very balanced situation so in order to balance the ecosystem you have to build some sustainable polymers and their resources and we can also consider building some newer technology like 3d printing technology why i'm expressing this 3d printing technology rather than other methods because in other methods even if you want to prepare some thin film what kind of methodology we use they they have a lot of drawbacks and it is not that convenient to prepare but this kind of additive manufactured personal protective equipments can reduce your polymer cost and the polymer utilization and you can control your resolution everything but the problem is the cost of this equipment is quite high at present maybe in future if we pay more attention to build some low cost 3d printers then we'll have very uh, we can do many wonders in terms of personal protective equipments and uh, now, uh, this slide is going to highlight about uh, something like thermoelectric devices okay now we have seen different kind of personal protective equipments now we have to understand how the sensory system work okay and most of the systems are not self powered we need to apply some energy inputs to make the sensors to work but this kind of thermoelectric devices can make your devices to work without any energy input so that's why it's termed as self powered energy gen uh, energy system or we can also say it as sensors because thermoelectric what is thermo we need uh, we need some energy input okay uh, to convert okay we use our body system you are going to put your variable electronics on your body we know that human body have temperature like 37 38 degrees okay now if you, your environment is having some other gradient temperatures like 20 or 25 there will be a temperature gradient this kind of gradients can be harvested by using this kind of system thermoelectric system can harvest the temperature gradient between the body and the environment then that sensor can function okay and it can also be used for sensing your body temperature or something like that so they have very good impacts and here 
I want to highlight the importance of different kind of materials. For example, to prepare some flexible system, you need the major resources. You have to choose the right materials. Okay, in market there are different materials, and in research we are trying to do many modifications in the architectures and then their domains and their dimensions. Everything we are trying to fine tune to get the better properties. And especially in terms of sensory application, they can use this kind of micro or nano structures to fabricate very efficient sensors to sense your body motions or voice recognition and thermal imaging. All these things are done with your newly developed nano architectured systems. Okay. And apart from the materials, it is highly imperative to consider this kind of micro architectures or nano architectures patterning techniques okay so there are many different patterning techniques i'll introduce you okay and uh, here this is to show highlight the importance of different kind of energy sensors you see this is tng png tg solar cells okay everyone is aware of solar cells in the past few decades right and now we need to transform ourselves to other techniques not only solar cells okay we have to contribute this kind of generators like piezoelectric generators electromagnetic generators or hybrid systems to get better outputs okay and now i want to show you where this kind of variable energy sensors can be employed okay in order to monitor some physical signals or thermal signals if you are feverish or if you have temperature fluctuations in your body if you get infected you will have this kind of body implications right so in order to track those systems we need a system which is self-reliant and you don't want any energy input and it should be wirelessly communicated okay you don't want to connect with some wire system you need some wireless system to connect with your sensors so this is another new generation techniques they have evolved in the very recent years and you see how they use this kind of uh, wound healing uh, self-powered uh, sensors so this kind of self-powered sensors can stimulate your wound healing process okay so you can proliferate your cells by using some electric fields in the past they have used some energy resources like battery and supercapacitors but in terms of uh, getting some better outputs we need some self-powered system so if we have self-powered system we don't want to charge very often or we don't want some rigid energy resources inside so you can reduce your weight and you can get some excellent outputs without any inputs, right? So this is highly desired. And even for wearable electronics, we are thinking about this and wearable energy harvesters and wearable photonics is also quite important, okay? We need some system to track your uh, sensors, right? Okay, you get some output, electrical output. How you can see them by your electronics. You need some photonics like LEDs or lasers to track, okay? So how we can fabricate by coupling this kind of wearable electronics and wearable photonics together in a single system. And this is again to show you there are many different methodologies like electrochemical polymerization, spin coating, vacuum filtration, blade coating, bar coating, drop casting. Yeah, there are many other methods available, okay? So in my case, I will I will focus on this kind of electrospinning techniques and uh, yeah, this kind of polymers and semiconductors or conductors and insulator have greater impact in building this kind of nano and micro devices. And uh, from these statistics, we are able to see that a lot of renewable energy resources are much needed in the upcoming years because in the past, you see, they have contributed a lot for the CO2 emission. That is your major culprit for your global warming. So how to avoid you have to build some system which is self-reliant and self-powered so for that we have to build some wearable sources wearable energy generators okay so what are all the problems in getting highly efficient energy devices okay first thing is we need some lightweight devices and the dimension should be of lower dimension and washability durability and connectivity and uh, their sensitivity and their multifunctional natures are highly desired to get some better outputs. And in terms of market, okay, any research you are going to do, you have to consider about the market. For wearable market, you can see 
how it is predicted okay so it will be having very good impact in the upcoming years especially in terms of personal protective devices and now i want to show you there are many different mechanisms available for the wearable sensor okay now you can consider this kind of sensor okay this is called the pso resistive sensor you just prepare one polymer or elastomers yeah okay you are going to strain them to different extent like 10 50 80 here you can see okay you have some conductive fillers on top of your elastomers and if you are going to strain them to a particular extent what will happen your conductive filler coating will degrade slowly so depending on that you will have some resistive deviations okay initially it will be like this much and after you are going to strain the resistance will go higher and then it will go down okay because our body is dynamic our body motions are dynamic so in order to track your body motions we need this kind of sensory system which can work very rapidly okay so it depends on different body portion you can see they have a different kind of strain okay especially you can see here face muscles they'll have very low strain but in terms of your fingers or your hand motions you get better strain outputs so you will get very high sensitive peaks if you play in that kind of body parts. and now this is to highlight the importance of electro spinning technique and uh, the evolution of wearable electronics in recent years you see how the wearable electronics is getting much attention in recent few years and how they are coupling wearable electronics with this electro spinning okay so now these are all the works we published in very recent year this is uh, we made some uh, stretchable perovskite light emitting diodes and this is uh, like self healable polymers we prepared uh, by using some tri block system polymeric system and we use perovskites and we try to encapsulate and we form uh, very uh, various kind of uh, optoelectronic devices what is self healing because i said that in the initial uh, slides i said uh, how we can prepare like electronic skin materials okay uh, we have to send something or we have to generate some electricity from our sensory system okay and now it has to be robust okay mechanically robust it should withstand our bodily strains if there is some mechanical mismatch your device will eventually degrade so how can you balance you need some this kind of self healable system okay so if you use this kind of self healable matrix then you can control your polymer chain motions by adjusting your glass transition temperature okay so we do this kind of study in very recent years so it is giving some good uh, results and we are still working on this kind of devices too and uh, these are all the different kind of patterns they can fabricate to get some uh, good matching over your body motions and your sensory outputs okay so if you can prepare this kind of buckle structure microbial structure serpentine structure holy structures nanomesh structures or trigonal packing structure you can also get much better efficiency not only your materials especially architectures or geometries are going to contribute to you to get a uh, better results okay this is a slide in this i'm highlighting there are different kind of fiber manufacturing systems uh, you can see a um, blowing system i introduce you uh, when i'm introducing you about uh, personal protective devices and centrifugal system or force spin uh, system here you can see it like cotton candy maker you just put your polymer inside and you rotate with higher centrifugal force then you will be able to collect all your fibers here right so it is very similar to your cotton candy maker and this one is very similar to your milk blowing system you see they have some compressed air system to connect and then uh, they can get your fibers over your collector and this is uh, using layers that they are doing and uh, for electro spinning they use some electrical voltage to make your fibers okay so there are many different methods okay in the past they just use the fiber they use some conventional textile and they dip coat and then they get but the problem is their durability their functionality won't retain for a longer period of time so how can you enhance your functionality of your devices by encapsulating your functional materials inside your matrix not only on the surface so we rely on electro spinning system okay and that thing also good but the problem is you cannot get very much lower dimensions it's hard to achieve with 
plate spinning system. Here, electro spinning you can achieve in few nanometers. So that is quite good. Okay, by strolling is another way. Okay, so I want to introduce how the nanofibers are prepared. So electro spinning, this is my uh, part. Okay, so we use some pump and we use some syringe uh, to fill our polymeric materials inside. And uh, with the help of some high voltage supplier, we can make the tailor cone to elongate over your connected surfaces like grounded collector. So it will collect onto your surface, but you can also make a lot of modification into your system. This is the basic setup for preparing electrospun nanofibers, but there are many other ways to prepare. Like you can also alter your fiber morphology, not always smooth. You can also get some hollow core sheet structure or ruben sheet structure, porous structure or aligned structures, okay? Or cross structures you can get. So there are many different possibilities, okay? So if, apart from this system, I'm just saying about collector types here. You see, there are many different kinds of collecting system. And even you can change your system setup to get higher scalability, okay? And there are different kinds of electro spin setup. If you are interested, please go through this article. You will get to know all the different variety of electro spinning due to time restriction. I'm just going through all the slides now. Okay, now you see, um, this is the recent review article we published. And in this, we have highlighted the importance of electro spinning and what kind of factors will affect your nanofibers. And this, in this, we have highlighted the importance of electro spin fibers in uh, sensory applications when compared to other kind of uh, sensors. So please go through if you are interested. And uh, electro spinning have uh, multifaceted uh, ways to achieve better results in different kind of fields, not only for sensor or energy generators, even optoelectronics and batteries, food packing, anti cooling. Okay. So here you can see the power consumption of uh, microelectronics. Okay. You are going to prepare. Okay. We are able to achieve from wearable electronics, okay, from solar cell, you can achieve higher outputs, okay? But for wearable electronics or wearable energy generators, how, many, how much power you can harvest? Maybe in micro or millivolts, milliwatts, okay? So this kind of watts, where we can use, we can use in different kind of application like this one, okay? So there are many different uh, mechanistic sensors available, but we prefer building some self-powered sensors like uh, piezoelectric and triboelectrics. And this is uh, to show there are many different kind of sensors. One of them is piezo resistive sensor, okay? Okay, you just consider this one. They have only RGO system and this is a hybrid system with RGO and silver nanowires. What will happen if you are going to make the stress over your substrate? The charges will try to flow through your one electrode to other electrode. But in terms of hybrid system, it is very rapid. It's like a highway. You can flow through very fast. So the response time will be very shorter. So your sensing application will be quite rapid, right? The same way, even for preparing this kind of structures, it is also possible. You can just imagine this as your sponge. And if you're going to deform to some extent, what will happen, the electron flow, you are going to connect with some electrical sources, right? So this is how the sensor work for pressure sensor application. The same mechanism here it works. See? They have some sensor and you're going to apply some pressure. That time, what happens? You can see your current changes. So that you can monitor with the help of some smartphones. So with this, you can also monitor your heartbeat, pulse rate, all these kind of things, okay? And in terms of textile-based uh, sensors, you consider this one. You see, this is the initial state, but if you're going to apply pressure, what will happen? The interconnection, the interprotrusion between the nanofibers will try to interconnect so the electron will get established through these materials so you can see the delta r delta r is nothing but change in your resistance so you can find out your sensing outputs like that and the same way they can also use some leather based application okay leather have two different sides one is grain side and the other side is corium side okay we know that corium side is quite soft not soft, very smooth, right? It has many grains over it. But in the, on the other side, just like a sponge, okay, you are going to apply some conductive materials over it, okay? In this case, they are using some silver nanowires, okay? And they are going to apply some pressure over it. You see, initially, the light is not blowing, okay? Zero kPa under that pressure. But if you increase your pressure, what happens? 
the interconnection between the silver nanowires it's getting established so you can track your responses with this the same way they also do some microstructural uh, characteristics by tuning their microstructures like for example here you see they are comparing three different structures and they also study with the help of some simulation to say that the stress concentration is higher in terms of micropyramids so they are able to show this kind of uh, stress concentration if it is higher then you will have very good sensitivity in your response so if you are interested in pso capacitive sensor please go through this article they have given all the basic details and how they prepare this kind of pso capacitive sensor first thing is we have to prepare some core structures how you can prepare core structures by using some fibers or you can use some foam like materials or you etch the material and you will get some rough structures like that or even you can use some conventional ways like photolithography or some other smaller way like a uh, very affordable way just use some sandpapers like that and uh, in this case you can see they are comparing two different structures one is dielectric flat structure and the other one is electrospun structures so with the help of 3d electrospun structures you can achieve better output you can see the delta c by c naught delta c is changing capacitance with, with by initial capacitance c naught okay so upon giving different pressure the capacitance will change much because here the deformation is not that high the flat structures the stress concentration is quite low whereas 3d structures they have higher amount of sensitivity due to the stress concentration okay and they have distinct 3d structures so they can contribute for the better outputs so this is uh, another article if you are interested please go through in that they have said the contribution from different porous structures how they can contribute for the dielectric properties and now i want to jump into something like triboelectric sensors triboelectric sensors are composed of two different materials which is having different charges for example you just consider one dielectric material you take and you attach with some electrode the same way and you have some gap okay if you are going to touch what will happen the charge will accumulate over one other right so depending on the charge the electrons will flow through one region to other so you will get some power out of it so this is a very basic setup and this article this is a very uh, recent article we did some review article in that i have explained all the sensory aspects and if you are interested please go through this is an open access channel anyone can see okay and uh, now i want to show you there are many different micro architectures and they have very distinct features, okay? Why they want this kind of micro architectures? In order to gain the functionality or you want to improve the efficiency, okay? So you have to build this kind of micro rough structures, okay? So we can see a few examples, okay? And how they process this kind of uh, micro structures by using some sustainable polymer like cellulose, okay? And they use different kind of uh, patterning techniques, okay? And uh, here, this slide is highlighting the importance of structural colors in the beginning i said that butterflies have different distant color due to this kind of reflections okay the same way here you see they can tune the polymers and you can self-assemble them in such a way that the crystals will grow like this so if they have a certain periodicity then you will have one color if you change okay for example you are going to work out so that time you are going to exert some strain over your material that time what happens to your periodicity it will deviate right depending on the deviation the reflection will also switch see here the reflection graph they are showing you upon 0 10 20 30 40 50 depending on the strain the color changes because of the periodicity okay there is some difference in the periodicity so this is how in this kind of optical sensors we don't want any energy inputs so this is like one example for your cell power devices and this is a very simple architecture here you can see they use a single wire based devices and this kind of wire based devices are helpful for the wind motion monitoring okay if you are going to deviate your conductive wire like that then what happens your resistance will change depending on the resistance you can track your wind speed like this okay this is you see mil, uh, meters per second zero it's very flat but if you are going to increase your wind flow rate towards your material sensor what happens your 
the resistance will accordingly change. Depending on the resistance, you can track your responses. On the other hand, you can also see the contribution of some random structures and aligned structures they have discussed in this article. And this article have uh, they have used some C and T based, okay, and they have compared spare structures and uh, medium network structure and dense structures. Then they have found out that uh, optimum levels uh, to dope your materials and uh, how they can achieve uh, better sensory outputs. On the other hand, if you look into this kind of magnetoelectric sensor, okay, we have seen about pairs of capacitive sensors, pairs of resistive sensors. The next stage is magnetoelectric sensors. It is very similar to your piezoelectric sensors, okay? The same way, uh, but you use some magnetic uh, materials inside to make the dipoles to move. So, so with the help of that, you can track, okay? So now they have fabricated four different kinds of structures. Okay, here you see, here, this is the length is same, top and bottom. Whereas in this case, they have different length. So depending on the different length, you can achieve very different one mesh strains. So this kind of strain concentration is important for your sensory outputs. So from this, they are able to show that the magnetic, total magnetic flux, the change of magnetic flux, you can see it is higher for your frustum four structure. So from this four structure, they are able to achieve better outputs because of this kind of stress concentration in the frustum four, okay? So now I want to dive into some material called perovskite. This is another functional material like your carbon-based structures, okay? This is also a, uh, not natural, okay? We can say it's mineral-based uh, structures and uh, how they can prepare this kind of structures. We can use different process like this, okay? One step, two step, nanocrystal pinning, hot injection method, evaporation, recrystallization. There are many different ways, okay? The major problem in perovskite is their stability. How you can achieve the stability? You have to achieve the very optimum level of your tolerance factor and octahedral factor. If you achieve the optimum level, you will balance your stability as well as your structure. If your structure is stable, the optimum, you will get very good optimum results in terms of stability as well. So here, they are comparing three different, uh, three different structures. You see, one is too small and too large and the medium structures. Medium structures are having the range between 0.8 to 1 tolerance factor. So this can contribute to the higher uh, energy outputs as well as it can give better stabilities. Okay. You compare, okay, in order to prepare some light emitting devices in the past, they have used some organic LEDs and quantum dot LEDs. And at present, many of them working on perovskite LEDs. Okay, why we need perovskite LEDs? You can see the color spectrum here. You see the EL intensity, EL is nothing but electroluminescence. If the peak is very narrow means they have very good color purity. So from these three, you can consider which is the best one. This is having very good narrow FWHM. So many of them are looking for this kind of higher color purity devices. So they work on perovskite materials. And even our team have worked on this kind of materials and we try to harvest better energy efficiency and uh, luminescence characters we balance by doping some polymers and uh, n-type small molecules to achieve uh, optimum level of uh, perovskites. And here you can see we use some interlayer assisted grain control process. In this, we optimize both the condition like one is interlayer and the emissive layer to harvest better uh, grain uh, conditions to get better uh, optical emission as well. And then we control the stability up to like 80 days. They are stable in the room temperature, okay? Okay, now we are able to control our perovskite structures and we control the morphology, everything. Now the next stage is we have to apply them in the wearable devices. So for that, we use some conventional uh, stretchable polymers like polyurethane, and then we do this kind of process and then we study the morphological aspects and then uh, electrical characteristics. And we demonstrated some mechanically robust uh, tax responsive devices like this. So we are able to do some wearable perovskite light emitting diodes. What next? Okay, we have to apply this kind of perovskites into energy harvesting system. And uh, very recent review, they have proved that this kind of perovskites has this piezoelectric characteristics. Okay, so now we have the chance to fabricate some piezoelectric sensors like this. And this is how they characterize their piezoelectric characteristics by using some PFM techniques. 
And uh, at present, uh, we have a current stage research niche in the fabrication of some human skin inspired structure. Before, they are able to fabricate this kind of structure, but we need some distinct advantages over the past. Okay, so water solvent process symbol and the electro sponge uh, patterned electrodes are quite robust. Facile processing, rapid manufacturing, scalable process are highly recommended. Okay, so for that, I have designed this kind of uh, pattern structure by using the electro spinning technique. We use some water soluble polymers and we form the fibers and we use some conventional elastomers and we thermally cure them and then we peel and then we form some embedded PDMS and we etch with some water. So we'll get some nano crevices and micro crevices over your flat substrates. So these kind of structures can be helpful. Okay, here you can see the evolution of our process. We just form the fibers and we form the embedded system and we etch them. So we confirm with the SCM and the AFM patterns and we also show the real-time images of our skin-inspired micro nanostructures and we confirm the chemical functionality using the PAR and we see the contributions by the surface energy characteristics by Overman methods. And uh, we study the surface properties like uh, cross-section we seeing we did to confirm the formation of uh, this kind of uh, micro nanostructures over our flat structures, okay? So now we are able to tune our electrical properties and uh, we achieve better stability in terms of stretching due to this kind of stress accumulation. You see in terms of uh, flat structure, how it is, whereas in this case, it is higher. So this can contribute to the better efficient sensors. Uh, we do, do uh, we have done some durability studies and we do some simulation valid validity to contrast the results between uh, normal structure and pattern structures, okay? And uh, we fabricated some strain sensor and we did a long time run like nearly 2000 strain cycle. And uh, we studied the environmental stability and uh, mechanical aspects like this. And we studied the antibacterial effects, cell viability, all those studies we have done. And finally, we employed into our human system like uh, epidermal electrodes, and then we tracked our sensory aspects like this. Okay, and then we also do some strain insensitive pressure sensors based on PSO resistive mechanism. And then finally, we prove the significance of our pattern PDMS using uh, this kind of ACL structure and organic light emitting diodes. Okay, and now I want to show you there are many different nature inspired structures like this. And uh, this is to prove that they have utilized this kind of uh, systems to fabricate triboelectric system, okay? Now, how they can choose the triboelectric series by this way, okay? You want to choose highly farthest, okay? One should be like highly positive, the other should be highly negative. Then only you can accommodate the electron flow switches over one to one, okay? So this is another example in that they have used some sustainable materials like uh, leaf structures because they have some chargers and they they can couple them with some electronegative polymers like pvdf okay the same way they can also pattern the structures by using some rose petals because rose petals if you look into they have this kind of microstructures okay they are highly oriented and uh, you can fabricate using this kind of uh, sustainable resources you don't want to fabricate some complicated molds or use some studio lithography it requires time and you need some etching process all those things so in order to avoid that we can fabricate this kind of simple devices okay and then uh, now i want to show you how the piezoelectric uh, contributions were um, harvested uh, because of this kind of phase structures we need this kind of beta phase structures why we need because we know that piezoelectric are governed by their polarizability. And you see the comparison between alpha and beta, which is having higher polarizability. Obviously, beta phase. So beta phase can give rise to better electrical outputs. So in this study, we have uh, highlighted the importance of electrostatic induction and uh, triboelectricity and how it can be helpful for creating some smart textiles. And uh, we do different blendings with the help of uh, PU because we know that PU are highly stretchable and uh, you can blend with some electronegative uh, PTFE, okay? So depending on your strain condition, if you are going to walk, then it will create the distance uh, variations among the fibers, two conductive fibers, then you will achieve some charging here. 
then you can utilize that charges uh, to form some wearable electronics, right? The same way, now I want to highlight the importance of PVDF and uh, how they use this kind of PVDF in the past because they use some thin film structures and electrode spun structures. And now we need some basic modification to achieve a higher beta phase contribution in our PVDF system. So we use perovskite blending. We are famous in preparing this kind of uh, wearable system, especially uh, we also do some perovskite based uh, light emitting devices okay in the past so we try to implement this kind of uh, perovskite system into our fiber system and then we study their yeah, morphological aspects and their optical emission their quantum dot because we use the quantum dot structures and then we study their emissive characters and uh, we read the beta phase structures uh, degrade them and then we find the better contributions were given among which blends okay and then finally we do the piezoelectric characterization and we conform our piezoelectric mechanism by doing the reverse pairs okay and then uh, we use this kind of piezoelectrics in forming e-mask and then for so you can harvest energy from uh, running the sewing machine or if you impregnate your sensor into the shoes you can harvest energy like this and uh, we also check the stability because we know that in the past i said that uh, per perovskites have some limitation in terms of stability so in this case how we can improve our stability how we have achieved our stability because of our dual encapsulation governed by this one you see we use pvdf as well as cnc and you see this mechanism perovskites are highly encapsulated into the matrix and they are dually encapsulated with our both system, not only CNC, it is also covered with our PVDF hydrophobic polymers. So another study we have done, uh, not based on perovskites now, because we know that perovskites also have some toxic effects in the environment. So people try to transition themselves from lead-based devices to non-lead-based devices, like uh, bismuth-based devices at recent years, okay? Now, we have to avoid this kind of uh, toxic killers, or it will add some complication into your tunability of your polymers right so now we can achieve very facile way without any additives okay in this project i am planning to compare two different kind of fibers one is nano reinforced structures like this with the help of electro spinning other one is normal wet spun structure it looks like it's uh, its size will be around like uh, micro fibers okay this one will be like it is also the total contribution is micro you can see here but it is composed of a lot of nanostructures, okay? And it is also embedded with some nanoparticles to get some higher electrical conductivity so that we can use it as our stretchable electrodes. So we do the study and uh, we confirm the presence by EDX and then we run the FTIR XRD characteristics. And after forming the successful conductive layers, we studied the strain in sensitive characters over uh, bodily strains. And then uh, here, this is our, how we prepare our small smart textiles, we pre-strain our electrospond reinforced uh, conductive fibers, and then we form our PVDF over it, and we spray coat another electrode like silver nanowires over, and then we release them so it will form some buckle structure so it can accommodate our bodily strain. And here you can see the mechanical toughness values when compared to wet sponge structures, they are not that highly stretchable, but when you compare your ERs, ERCF and ERF, you see how stretchable it is and they have higher toughness characteristics okay so now we can achieve better stretchable characteristics and durability because of this reinforcement and we also compare with our simulation result you see the higher stress concentration over our circumference of our wet sponge structure wet sponge structure we formed and we formed some conductive pillars over it but if you are going to strain what is happening there the stress concentration is higher over the circumference. So that will degrade your performance. That's why here you can see the resistance changes are quite high. But if you use this kind of reinforced structure, they are quite stable, okay? So that's why they are exhibiting very high durability when compared to normal resistance structure. This is what we conclude. And then we do some uh, smart textile application for that. We compare again wet sponge structure and the reinforced structure here, you can see. And then uh, we compare the performances because wet sponge structures are not highly reinforced. And that kind of mechanical strain is not imposed in the wet spinning process. 
but in terms of uh, electrospun process, the Taylor cone elongation is going to give some mechanical force that will trigger your beta phase formation in the PVDF. So you don't want any other additives like toxic additives or expensive additives into your fiber system. So this is what the innovation we made in the recent few years. And uh, finally, I want to highlight because uh, we do a lot of sensory applications, but after doing all this, we have to couple with our mobile devices, okay? So it has to be very conformable and air permeable if you want to use it for a long time. Okay, you are going to use this kind of system into your personal protective equipments, then it should be highly otherable, conformable, haptic, and uh, mechanically robust. All these things you have to consider. So there are many different challenges, air permeability, because if you are going to use our biocompatibility, degradability, all these things. So it is very hard to balance all the characters in one device, okay? So, and apart from that, data privacy, okay, you get that, okay, you are able to get some outputs, okay, you are getting some sensory outputs, but now you want them to transfer your data to others. So for that, you will use some Bluetooth or any other body area networks like this. There are many other, this is not, nothing but wearable body area network. So there are many different body area networks you can couple your personal devices with your sensors. But the problem is their wearability and their data privacy. Okay, so we have to consider all those things and their working range and data rate, you see. So they have some security risk. So in the upcoming years, people from computer science background and information technology, they will also contribute for this kind of advancement in our field. Okay. So these are all the works I have done in the past few years. So if you are interested on my research, please go through the articles. And uh, if you need any guidance, we can also talk. And uh, these are all the references I followed. And uh, I'm available in the social platform. If you want to get in touch, please, uh, yeah, you can add. I have given all the QR code in this. So yeah, let's have a a very good knowledge exchange session if it is possible. Um, and uh, these are all the scenic beauties in Taiwan uh, during rainy season, I take this. And uh, they have uh, many cultural festivals in the roadside, like our India. In India also they uh, celebrate. And here, this is called National Yang uh, uh, Park, which is a very good park. And they have a lot of restriction. If you are visiting Taiwan, at least you should visit this once, okay? And uh, this is another place in the central Taiwan. They are a very good uh, scenic area. You can see they have very good hiking trail, their old monuments. And uh, yeah, you see how they have very good team plantation, climate, everything is good. And uh, this is my team. And uh, this is my professor, Dr. Chichinko. And uh, these are all my teammates who have uh, continuously, consistently supported me in my research. Okay, so I want to thank them all. I want to acknowledge all of them. And uh, if you are interested in my university, if you want to pursue a degree, you can also consider. This is my university website and they are offering scholarship for the international student. So if you are interested, uh, you can have a look on this link. And uh, yeah, not uh, last but not least, uh, they are all the contributors uh, who are very supportive in my research. Okay, so I want to thank everyone who have uh, substantially contributed in my research and they have very good uh, uh, discussion with me in my past and that present too. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank the organizers and the institution, ISF College of Pharmacy. And uh, I believe all the audience are getting benefited uh, through my uh, research experience. Uh, if you are interested, please go through my article. And uh, yeah, if you have any queries, we can discuss it now or we can also discuss after. I'll share my email ID to the organizer. Okay, thanks for your patient listening. I'm open for the questions. Thank you. So thank you so much, Dr. Logarathan, sir. Sir has did uh, excellent job by providing a very precise uh, note on variable devices as a sensor. Sir, here are some queries. First is, sir, uh, if we talk about pharmaceutical preparation, we have a QC and QA aspects to evaluate their performance as well as their ability. So uh, what are the various guidelines so that their quality control aspects can be also maintained or their uh, system will be ultimately? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, 
every every country follow their own guidelines if they have if they have already given okay or they'll follow just uh, others like european standards or international standards there are many standards and some other private standards also available like satra or something like uh, astm american standard uh, test methods there are many other test methods too not only just uh, national standards uh, yeah yeah so it depends and uh, especially if you are going to promote your product you need some certification without certification no one will believe or no one will be interested to look into your products so i believe uh, if you are very interested in achieving some novelty or good innovation to help the society everyone have to focus more and uh, it needs uh, consistent support from all the team it's not it's just not like one one person can do everything <laughs> yeah yeah it's teamwork so yeah i believe uh, if they are interested uh, eventually they'll do it yeah we don't want to ignite them yeah yes i, sir, sir, I have yes. one two one or two idea let's say with uh, uh -huh. variable device i will definitely mm -hmm. discuss with you if it's okay. feasible or not uh okay yes 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 thank you professor thanks for your involvement and uh yeah you yes. have a better idea i believe yes 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 we can uh, definitely we can have some session to discuss yes thank you so thank you so much sir for your valuable talk